Let's uh, let's break this up into our thirds very gently here. Like that, just just roughly. Now I'm going to try and make my picture a little bigger here. Uh, let me see if I can actually. Uh, what is my Mordor reference here? I'm just going to look at this, and we're just going to type in this real quick so I can see this quickly. One second. All right, I just need the looking for that one specific image. Of course, that's the one that I cannot find, which I find hilarious. Of course. Ooh, that's kind of a neat image there. Ah, finally found it. Okay, I think we'll use that. So we're not going to draw a big evil tower right there dead center. We're not doing that, right? What are we going to do? Look at where it's going to go. Seriously, all kidding aside, evil tower here, volcano over there. Look at this, thirds, right? Doing it in the thirds. Now, one of these can be more dominant, and this can be taller, right? Here, if we got our eye up here. So that's going to be taller. This is going to be lower, right? Look at this. Interest, 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 interest. Nothing in the center. But it's not just the, you know, nothing here. We got this whole little eye thing that's going to go here. And then we've also got some ash and, you know, towers here. Part of the, the fortress towers, obviously. And this is going to extend over this way. So we're going to have these different planes, right? Here, let's have our ooh, tower going like that. So. Let's put this up a little bit further, maybe, right about there. And then this is going to come off here. Again, we want to have plenty of things coming off our giant evil tower, right? And we're going to work this down as well more. And then, uh, so, and that's going to cut in front of our volcano here. But look at this. There's, again, everything is, these are the four points we're interested in. And, all right, here's our, our crack -a doom over there. And that's got a, Go off to the side here. And also, too, you can see that this is uh, kind of offset, right? So this taller than this. And I'm going to see if we can't get that a little more ash in right there. And then we'll have our cloud. Hey, Sarge, look at this. We restocked. I forgot to put ice in there, but at least it's restocked. Thank you so much, Sarge. Uh, Sarge, how the heck are you doing? Boy, Sarge, uh, so, so there's little Minas Morgo. Ah, very fun, right? Nothing like a big old sickly green evil tower with, with evil critters all around. Very heartwarming, right? Oh, oh thanks, uh, thanks so much, Ford, for the birthday wishes and you too Sarge thank you very much and Mefti thank you very much uh, let's see uh, Patik says I love its composition as your eyes are drawn to the the tower so here we're trying to use this right oh you know what look at this I, I now that I have the bigger picture these are more okay ah guess what there's another there's a whole nother level right here yes and then there's this over here too. Oh yeah, there's this over here too. And then this is like some the plains of ash here. Yeah. All right. This is making that makes a little more sense. It also kind of anchors this a little bit more. When I turn it this way, you should be able to look at a composition any old way. It may not look like something, but it's got to be interesting. So here you see, like, look at this. Even though that this is not part of this, it still looks like it's part of one shape. Here you get another whole shape. All of these kind of look like their own little shapes. And then when we start putting in our colors here and our values, bam. Ah, this is going to be very, oh, there's like some mist that comes in front of this. I think this is going to be really fun. I know it doesn't look like absolutely anything right now, but I, I hope folks will uh, will bear with us here. 
I hope folks will bear with us and I think this is going to be really fun for you to see. All right, so here we go. Let's start to put some colors on here, some values, some darks, all that kind of good stuff. Let's have at it now. We can come back with some of our thinner as well. And this is going to be, well, that's got some green in it right there. I'm going to get some blues in this. We're, we're scumbling along the way here. Uh, we're just going to find some of our values in this here. Let's uh, get some of our Van Dyke Brown out here. Uh, also over here. And then all we're going to do, pre-glaze, right? We might even take makeup sponges to this. Seriously, you think I'm kidding? You think I'm kidding? Makeup sponge. Yeah, we, we could take a makeup sponge to this too. I mean, it's just uh, all the same stuff that we do with miniatures. Why, why shouldn't we be able to do the same thing with our regular paint too, or, or with our uh, 2D art. Why shouldn't we be able to do the exact same thing? I'm going to come back here with another brush. This has got some indigo in it. So all these are is just illustration boards, by the way. A hot press illustration board. That's all it is. This is also how we keep from getting too much paint to pile onto here, right? This is the same thing we do at miniatures. You go back, you watch any miniature. It's almost like we're almost doing a watercolor here, too. So, Sarge, I hope that you had yourself some fun today. Uh, and, oh, how did the thing go with the uh, with the hounds? How did that work out? Uh, I know there was a bit of, uh, there were some introductions made. Was, was that the case? At least I think so. So hopefully that all went off without a hitch. Or at least mostly without a hitch time for our dark evil tower to get some darks here and all we're doing is just blocking this in uh, look at this it's it's like it's a watercolor except we can you know easily go back over the top of it with some darker tones uh, thanks so much Ford Oh, I'm glad we restocked here because we can have some more of that. Thank you very much. Because, boy, we could certainly use... Well, you can always use some of that, right? You can always use a bit. You know, I might even let a little bit of my green. That's some of our fluorescent green from our last image there. Let's get some more of our dark over here. Why are we doing this with all of the... Uh, the thinner in it. Well, because we don't really need to be piling up paint all over the place, right? We don't need to be doing that. So again, the scene that we're doing is to the lower left-hand side. Look at this. It took a few seconds to get to this. And now we're even starting to look at this. We're removing some paint here. We're even letting some of that paint get removed. So straight away, you can see that the shadow of Mordor, right? You got your Mount Doom here. You got your big evil tower. You can already see how some of these uh, mountain, uh, some of the different crags and everything, how those are going to play out, right? Matter of seconds here. It does not take long. Ah, Bodhi seems to be okay, and Raya is settling in so far. If I can just keep your three-year-old... Ah, boy, Sarge, uh, you know, that's the... We... Our dog that we used to have, we actually had to be very careful whenever kids were around because the dog had never seen kids basically before. And, and the dog was absolutely terrified of kids. And we had to be really careful because the kids want to poke their eyes and stick their fingers in their nose. and Because in some ways they think it's like a stuffed animal, right? I mean, they're, they're kids. I did the same thing, right? Especially when I was like 40 years old. I still did that. No, I just, uh, couldn't resist that one. 
but yeah that's it's understandable right that the kids would kind of maybe do some things that the dog would not be super happy with or the dog would be like what's going on why is this happening what is this small entity trying to do to me uh, let's see I, I think we're all caught up there so now like you say or like i said i'm putting in some of these fun dark shades. these are the same literally the same brushes we use on our miniatures it's the same as what we just did over here but you can see we're blocking this in look at here we've got the we went past the blocking in stage and we went all the way to the fun little detail stage right And look, oh, look at this. Just some fun, rocky, craggy things here. Do some more on this side. You know, I'm going to have this one be the foreground one, and we're going to make a change already. We're going to change this to have this end right here. So that this kind of, yeah, this, this comes out all the way to here. So this is going to end right about there. We also have this back here. And then let's start to work out Mount Doom a little bit more. So it's almost like watercolor. People, Some people might look at this and say, is that a charcoal drawing? That's just oil paints right there. Hey, Jay Wedge, how you doing? Jay Wedge, how you doing? Dog be like, my eyes, I need those. I mean, of course, you could just, you know, slather the kid in, uh, like, dog treat smell or something like that. Because, ooh, that's, uh, that could be very fun. That could be way more fun than I thought. Ooh, I like that idea. All right, so we're bringing that all the way down here. Now, I know uh, some folks, uh, I've seen them, they're doing the 2D art, and they're doing a lot of this stuff with the palette knife. Which, uh, oh, I'm sure that must be really fun, doing that with the old palette knife. And now we need, uh, I'm not going to do too much on the tower right here, because we obviously have a lot of the sky that we're going to be doing on the other side of it here. But uh, uh, all I'm trying to do is just, uh, okay, you know what, maybe we want a tower over here or something over here. I think that mountain needs to be a little bit higher. So this is kind of your dominant side over here. And over here is where our, our glow is going to be. You don't want this to be all, but just a whole bunch of hard edges there. So I'm glad that went well for you, Sarge. I was like, oof. Now, I guess it's easier maybe with sometimes with two dogs and it is a couple of cats, right? Because the armored wolf, uh, there was a lot of holding of breath with the cats, uh, the meeting of the mimes with the cats for the first time, or meeting of the mimes. I'm not quite sure which way that would go. Guess we might have to get some more of our indigo out here. But uh, speaking of indigo, so again, more of our thinner here. Boom. So now it's not just a, a value, it's got some color as well. And it's got some of that blue there. We don't want as much of it right there. I'm going to gray that down a little bit. I was getting a little bit too blue. And there's just a little bit of our white that's worked its way in there. We're going to be throwing some more in. Uh, back to our blue again, maybe even a little bit of the black spinel. Nice big old brushes, right? Big old brushes. No little wussy brushes here. Uh, Sophia's going. Sophia's going in the lurk mode and just slather the kid in peanut butter. Wow, yeah, J Wedge, won't that uh, that'll have the dog licking its chops for hours, pretty much. Yeah, I felt the same when my daughter and her kids moved in. Oh, that's right. Never been around people, let alone. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so Leia can do whatever she wants to her, which usually means lots of Band-Aids. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
but yeah, we uh, the, uh, Gus was not fond of kids. Well, if they were quiet and stuff like that, but little kids uh, and quiet, that's not super common, right? Those two things are, what is that, the two things that don't go together? Little kids and quiet and calm. Uh, little kids are usually basically a thermonuclear explosion that either hasn't happened yet or is in progress. Actually, like a thermonuclear explosion is nothing compared to a kid. So, yeah. I'm pretty sure that the Tsar Bomba was not actually a nuclear device. It was just like a really upset two-year-old or something like that. Because I'm pretty sure that a, a, you could hear a really uh, upset two-year-old from a thousand miles away without even straining to hear the sound. Something tells me that. Uh, so, oh, and, and happy Father's Day. I know it's not quite there yet. It's 1051 here. I know it's 1051 for you, too. But uh, kind of a, in advance, right? All right? I know this has some green on it. Does it look like I care? It doesn't matter, does it? We're going to have to get some more of our quick dry white out there, too. All right, threw a little bit of thinner on there. Bam. I think you can see how this is starting to build up to a little bit cooler there, a little bit warmer here. Bam, this way. Also, directional brush strokes, yes. Back to ooh, uh, a little bit of our yellow there. And each of these, just like on our, well, let's get a little less Fultim into that to warm it up. Yeah. A little bit of S Fultim there. Uh, oh, yeah, we need to do that over here too, don't we? And uh, look at each of these, uh, these planes starts to move back. Some come forward, some move back. Uh, let's see. Oh, your three-year-old loves to look at dogs. Hates touching them, though. Ah, uh, so Sinstar. Yeah, the. Uh, it was it was an interesting thing. Just just like Sarge was saying about Bodhi, it never, the dog was just not around kids. And and the dog was not a fan of loud noises or anything like that. Uh, what is it? You know the. The pets take on the personality of their owners. Well, they start to look like them, too. So, Sarge, I'm sure that you and Bodhi are pretty much indistinguishable from each other by now. But, uh, and of course, Gus and I were pretty much indistinguishable from each other. But Gus was not really used to being around loud sounds and fast-moving things and fast-moving objects and... Yeah, that was that wasn't his vibe, and uh, ah, Grumdy's finally here. Grumdy, how are you doing? Uh, let's see. Layla reminds me, or Leia reminds me of a kid from the Minion movie. She just runs up to Booty, hugs her, and says she's so fluffy. Yeah, well, of course, of course, right, Serge? So, uh, Grumdy, here is our first painting. A little bit of Minus Morgul love right there. So that was really fun. And uh, I think you can imagine what's about to happen here. And we were just doing some pre-glaze, right? Oh, gee whiz. I almost forgot this. I wish I had done one of these a little bit sooner. But uh, don't mind me. I'm going to be taking a picture. Oh, I wish I had one sooner. But, I mean, this is still not too bad. Not too bad. So uh, we'll try and catalog this along the way here. Ah, uh, Coffee Nerdy Beer is going to relax a little adult beverage. Thank you very much, Coffee Nerdy. I appreciate that. Ah, uh, so these are, I just got them, uh, I think I got these off of Dick Blick. So the usual crescent and it's hot press illustration board. Typically what they are used for are these guys doing these things. Actually, I got to get another batch of these things too. So I think with all the kind donations and all the bitses, I'll probably get some more of these too. So yeah, 
that's what these are typically for because they, they fit on screen just perfectly, right? Well, mostly. But, you know, here we, we get our chance to play around now with some, some 2D art. Uh, oh, thanks, Grumdy. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So these are, uh, actually, these are hot press right here because I wanted to have uh, minimal texture on them. So Lamines, you saw those, uh, the other watercolors that I had done right way back in the day. Those were also on a uh, hot press watercolor board, which is really hard to find all of a sudden. I, was, I just, I was having all kinds of problems trying to find hot press watercolor board. It's the darndest thing. But don't ask me why. I don't know why, but I was having a heck of a time. I, I used to get that stuff all the time. Like every couple of weeks, I'd be ordering from Dick Blick more hot press watercolor board. Uh, but for some reason, just can't find it anymore. And now here in these, in this space, we're going to find more, more stuff, more activity here. <laughs> it's not going to be all that dissimilar. I know it's going to take me a little while to scroll up to this. And again, this is what we did last year on our birthday stream right here. But take a look at this. Ah, all right. So look at what we, we just were doing here. Now, this was done in acrylics. I wish I could have done this with oils. But see how the waves are kind of built up like that? And they sort of intersect with each other. Some are wider. Some spread out more than other ones. So yeah, the uh, oh, sorry, I just I scrolled right on by it too. Let me get to some of my old art stuff here, and we got a ton of these uh, again on the blog. So that's hot press watercolor board. There's some tooth to it, but there's very little. I mean, it is it is as darn close to smooth. it's not like glass smooth, but it's pretty darn smooth. I have to say, it's pretty close to it. Yeah, so Sinstar, I believe these are 6 by 8 Yeah, I think they're 6 by 8 And now we're, look at this, even a little bit of, uh, starting to rough this up. There's a lady starting to insinuate at some texture here. So a second ago, that was one big old flat shape. Look at how we're starting to break it up already. See this? Breaking it up into even smaller shapes. And we haven't even started fooling around with our reds and oranges and all that kind of stuff yet. Now we can't. Look at this again. A high-quality a high quality precision tool. Only the best here on the channel, of course. Oh, what the heck. We're going to start out with some fanchion red. Um, maybe a smidge of our cadmium here. And look, it's just literally just sticking the brush. Uh, I can only imagine what this looks like to people. They just have to be absolutely horrified by this. They must be just uh, like, what am I seeing here? All right, uh. Let's carry this down the side of uh, Mount Doom here. Just mix into some of our clouds, which once we get this in place, then we can kind of darken some things down, lighten some other things up. Oh, where's my asphaltum here? Yeah, we're going to use uh, some of this. Some of the clouds here. like a so and then we will go darker from here for sure so again we're just uh having some fun dropping down some values that's what we do uh, that's probably got some fair amount of green in it it's going to come back again to another one of my uh Nice. Well, look at look at that. Look at all that nice sand and gravel in the brush handle there. Isn't that perfect? 
I mean, that's just like absolutely perfect there. Now let's really start to bring in some s actual serious darks here. Uh, some Van Dyke Brown. Might just throw a little bit of thinner into that. Ooh, touch of Asphaltum as well. Warm it up. Uh, th yeah, that's the... Uh, uh, well, oh, Bill Alexander too, right? The, the same kind of thing there. Uh, I remember just uh, all those years watching Bill. Ex I never really got to see Bob uh, Bob Ross that much. It was uh, mostly Bill Alexander. Uh, I, I I suppose I could. Well, I can just watch. I can watch either one of them on YouTube if I wanted to, right? Uh, oh yeah, dark over here as well. And it's essentially kind of mixing on its own as we just continue our dry brushing effect here. And remember, we can bring in some lighter colors there. We can bring in some darks. We can do anything we want, right? It's our deal. We do anything we want. Uh, oh, Grundy just got the 10K Bits badge. Oh, what do you got there? You got Mr. Giggles. And what else do you have? Yeah, you do. Ah, uh, yes. Hey, hey, uh, ooh, that, that doesn't look too good. That, that looks scary, but, uh, hey, where, where's the old guy with the ganja? It's like, look, we're doing, this is a serious thing. We're doing 2D art. There's no time for ganja. It's like, um, but, yeah, the old guy, he's like, no, 2D art, it's serious. So there you go. Grumdy has both Birdie and Jeeves. Look at that. How cool is that, huh? I'm going to darken you up over here too. The darker this is, the lighter that can be. Sometimes you can lighten things up without having to add a whole bunch of highlights. Why do you do that? You add a bunch of darks, right? Oh, Matt, so Grumdy, yes, they're, uh, I, I think that uh, uh, Jeeves is probably going to be a big fan of the serious artwork, right? Serious 2D art. Uh, Grumdy, uh, let's see, how many videos do I have? I think I've got maybe three or four 2D painting videos. Just to, the whole idea, again, is to show people that there's no difference between the 2D art and the, the miniature stuff. It's just the same. The idea is all the same. Okay, we're just going to, again... Spread out some more of these darks here. Well, we can go darker than this. We can also go a little bit cooler than that with some of our indigo. All right. How's about we come back and get a little bit of our darker reds blended in with some of our darker colors here too. Yeah, that's what we need. You know, it might even get a little bit of our reddish color extended out a little further maybe. Because I'm literally just twirling the brush around there. Boy, Grumdy, right, uh, gosh, what was it in the last... 72 hours, right? Thursday, Friday, Saturday. In the last 72 hours, we went from this. We went from this to this. Where are you at? There you are. We went from this to this to this. I mean, to me, it's just kind of, uh, it's just a natural thing. But, I mean... I know there's there's other folks like Mike Disney. He does 2D art. I think uh, Zambies does 2D art too. But I don't think they do terrain. I'm trying to think of... Well, I guess because they're not nuts. They're more sane than we are here. Uh, me, I'm just pretty much just bonkers, right? They're a little bit more sane. Ooh, look at that. See how that's, uh, that has now continued? We're letting the eye kind of escape this way. Yeah, I think that's going to work. I think that's going to work. And we're also going to, again, let our 
cloud stuff work its way into some of these areas here too. Boy, Grumdy, I'm telling you, there was no difference between the pre-glaze and some of the stuff we were doing here than what we do on the miniatures. It's, huh. I know some, some folks, they might say, well, no, it's not the same thing. But to me, it's just the same stuff. There is literally no difference to me. I'm going to use a little bit of this up here so that we can come back into our giant evil tower. <laughs> uh, look at what we're doing to that old brush. Well, not so old brush either. And just like we did with our other scene here, you know, we, we remember we took a lot of these different places. We pushed some back. We kept creating more, stepping these things forward. Like this was never supposed to be part of it. He was never supposed to have that flaming sword. But I mean, Witch King, right? So why wouldn't he have it? It balanced this out. So there was a lot of changes made to this that I wasn't originally anticipating doing. A lot of changes made. And that's the beauty of the oils. Uh, you can make those same changes on the miniatures too. It's not like you can only do it on 2D art stuff. You can certainly do this on your miniatures too. You know, I might just, oof, a little bit of thinner. Don't want to get too much into that. But now we, we have to start working some lights back in here again. Also, uh, some edge management. So here, see, we're, we're bringing this back. Now that not with it's dark versus light well we're doing the same dark versus light but that's like a cooler dark versus that warmer light and this can get a whole lot warmer right that's going to get a lot warmer right there look at look at the brush stroke here we're literally just pushing it up like this we've done this same type of brush stroke on miniatures all kidding aside look and here's that that misty stuff that goes in front of the mountain there yeah look at You thought we were kidding when we were going to put some mist out in front of the mountain right there. It's not quite the misty mountain, but there's a little bit of mist in front of that. And we can soften all that stuff up too. Uh, we're going to get ourselves a little bit of a uh, layers of clouds right over here, I think. And it's kind of pointing down this way. It's pointing you towards the action saying, come on this way. Look at all this stuff. Look at the big old evil tower. Look at all this stuff on here for you to see. A feast for your eyes. So making use of the brilliant yellow pale here where we can. And like I said, we're going to be drawing in more parts of our tower here as well as time goes along. But right now, just interested in some basic, basic shapes here. We we got these two areas here of a uh, of lighter color that we're going to have to manage. Now, where did that uh, my primary blending brush go? Well, we're just gonna we're just gonna have to keep raking out more brushes here, I guess. And this will be uh, yet another blending brush. We'll have a lot of brushes to clean after this. But that that's all good. I think I can turn up my brightness again, maybe. Eh, maybe a little tiny bit. We'll let... Uh, little smidge of that also get uh, smoothed down a bit so oh you know there's actually a little bit of our a little bit of red down there too where did their uh, our lava brush go yeah I think we'll put a little hint of that down here so before I forget because I will just uh, let me get a little 
Just remember to put a little bit of glow down here. This is sort of like our Witch King sword. Yeah, that, that's important. That's going to be real important to do that. And then this can then reflect up on the tower bits. Oh, that's really important. Maybe we might, go, might do a little more here. Because it was sort of surrounded by a moat of lava. I mean, you got lava sitting over here. Why wouldn't you have a moat of lava around your giant evil tower? That's just good defense planning right there. That's just good defense planning. So I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. Now I think I'm going to have to go with a darker red around this. And uh, there will be, there's going to be something there, believe me. It's going to be more than a little bit of a, uh, a hint of a red glow. There's going to be much more around there. Uh, let's go with their uh, Van Dyke Brown here, I think. There's going to be a little bit thinner in this tube. Ah, not too much, but a little bit of thinner kind of helps the paint flow as we welcome in Great Scott Minis. Great Scott, how you doing? Yeah, Grumdy, you can never have too many uh, too many blending brushes, right? And especially clean ones. Uh, so Great Scott Minis, how the heck are you doing? And thanks so much for the birthday wishes. So... On our birthday, apparently, we risk, we remove one dimension and we just start painting in two dimensions. Uh, it's a thing. It's a birthday thing, I guess. We we just start painting in two dimensions. I don't know what it is, but uh, it's 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 fun. I enjoy it, and hopefully, hopefully, it's fun for other folks too. All right, and uh, I. I think we need to, yeah, we need to extend the flanks of this out this way. They need to be a little darker. Where'd that, where'd our brand new blending brush go? There you are. Okay, a little bit of blending. Uh, so, Great Scott, how have you been? Actually, so what are what are some of the most recent projects that you've been working on? And also, too, you know, you got, uh, you know the usual. You got yourself some Insta links or something like that. You can th throw those in the chat and share those with folks. That would be really cool. So that's going to be mountainous. And then let's see if we can't maybe have this be more of a part of the tower here. Again, little smaller towers everywhere. And then we work our way up to here. And we'll get our little uh, our eye in, in there too. Uh, I'm painting a few Descent, Frostgrave, and D and D miniatures. Well, that sounds like uh, sounds like you're having a whole bunch of fun there. Sounds like you're having yourself a blast. Maybe even a tower that uh, comes up in through here. Part of the uh, lower lower defenses. Uh, let's see, this painting is one stick away from being enormous uh, a banner for being <laughs> uh, so. Uh, so, Grumdy, uh, are we going to have to sculpt something that's big enough to carry this as a banner? <laughs> and, and something that can actually handle a piece of illustration board like this? Uh, it, it would be pretty hilarious, wouldn't it? All right, that we're continuing again. This is our Van Dyke Brown And then back here to it. Look at this. We're, used, we're using the side of the brush. All of a sudden, instead of a point, because look, you've got point of the brush, side of the brush. Same brush, two different brushes. One brush, but many. Yes, we can do that. Uh, 
that's starting to starting to come uh, starting to just pop out now emerge and this is uh, believe it or not not even the darkest dark we can still go darker than this just like our lightest light we can go a heck of a lot lighter than what's here literally the lightest color on here is is not much lighter than that so here's light that's about our lightest color right now that's on this entire thing that's about how light we've gone now I'm also going to take a little picture of this but first how's about a film noir just to eh can already see what kind of shapes we're getting right there now well it's not to do that much but I'm going to take a quick picture here now that we got some of our reds involved I sort of forgot to keep taking pictures on the other one don't want to do that here I think well the other one we had the hype trains and lots of kind donations and other such things so yeah we're going to try and Remember here, there we go. Now, before I get too much into some of these other areas, let's see what might be some of our lightest points here. I'm just gonna, well, we're gonna get rid of some of the Mina's Morgul colors out of our brushes. And oh, look, we have some of our fluorescent orange here. Probably gonna have to get some more of my cadmium yellow out there. Because, yeah, that is uh, that is not a light color right there. It's very intense. It's uh, not terribly light. Oh, look what that does already. Did it take long? No, it didn't take all that long. What we're starting to not just add lighter colors here, but this is uh, very much more intense, right, color-wise here? Can even put a little bit of a uh, can make this into more of a cloud right here, and sort of you know I, I highlight the underside of that cloud a little bit. Can also start to hint at what's happening over here. And we'll also uh, like we we're talking about. Again, having that sort of uh, that moat effect. So this starts to come out to the foreground. We're bringing the background to the foreground. Oh, look at that. That just blows your mind, doesn't it? So I, I just, but as we, well, we're starting to get to the close of our official birthday day because it's 1118 here. But just for all the folks that have expressed birthday greetings in so many fun ways, I, I really do appreciate that. It means a whole bunch. And, and I'm really glad that people have been, uh, it seems like people have been watching the uh, my crazy 2D painting here, our, our landscapes in Middle Earth. And I'm really glad because... I think this will be very valuable for you. So when you see me paint miniatures from now on, hopefully something like this sticks in your mind. All the stuff that we've been doing here, hopefully that kind of sticks in your mind and you say, oh, that's what the heck he's talking about. That's what he means by edge control, lights, darks, all that kind of good stuff. That's what the heck he's talking about. No, thanks, Grumdy. Uh, it's you know, it's it's one thing when you're just having a whole bunch of fun, but hopefully you just you kind of hope that other folks are enjoying it too, and and that there is a value for them, that there's something there that they can they can kind of point to in the future and go, oh, all right, yeah, I, what was it he was talking about? Yeah, I was talking about this. Oh, I got a little little lava starting to come down, do the stuffs. You know what? Why don't we? We got it. Let's get some of our lighter fluorescent paints here. Ah, uh, well, Grumdy, what I'm gonna do, and I was hoping to be able to do this, and I think it's gonna work, is to take like that first session, right? Because it's eh, it's about three hours long, effectively. Turn this into a YouTube video. 
then turn this into a YouTube video. I mean, it won't be like a classic tutorial, right? Because there was a hype train. I think there was like a level three or level four hype train in there. But I mean, we can maybe just edit some of that out, but it still should be relatively effective, right? Give folks an idea. Ah, Mr. Mayhem is back. Ah, thanks, Mr. Mayhem. I, I really do appreciate that. I mean, you heard me say it earlier. I wasn't even sure if people were going to ever want to see terrain or sculpting or any of those things. I thought, well, nah, they're kind of used to miniature painting. That's what they're going to want to see. And fortunately, Armored Wolf and the other folks in the chat, they said, no, 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 look, you just go ahead and do those things. If you do it, they will watch. That, that was, uh, you know, Grumdy, everybody, they just said, no, you just, you want to do it. You go ahead. We'll watch it for sure. And it, it's going to be helpful. And you'll have fun doing it. And that's that's what matters. So these are, our, again, our own hand-mixed fluorescent paints that we're working with here. Ah, Mr. Mayhem has been, speaking of some mayhem, has been working through some of those older videos. All the fun mayhem there. Uh, actually, Mr. May, I don't know if you've run across any of the other 2D, but I, I could swear I've got at least four different videos where I paint stuff in 2D. Do I want that there? No, nah, I don't want that there. I want that down here. Yes, that's, that's where we want that. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And we'll bring this down like so... So it's uh, starting to look a little more Baradour-y, Baradour-ish. Uh, so great, Scott. I, I believe that all of the all of the mixing type videos, those color swatches there, I do believe that is on the five dollar. I think it's called the painting pyramid level, maybe, or supporter, builder of the pyramid, something like that. And they're they're all in the general techniques there. That's where I, obviously I'm, I'm mixing the paints, where we're doing those color swatches, which are really important, right, for people to see. Ah, Pingu, welcome back, and Clover, Clover, how the heck are you doing? So this is actually our second painting of the night. This was our first one here. Look, you got Mordor in the background. Now you got Mordor right in front of you. See how that works? So yeah, we had some a blast doing this. This is about three and a half hours effectively. So Pingu and Clover, it's uh, great to have you in here as always. Hope that both of you are doing well. Uh, it's definitely been a very fun birthday stream and a it's really been actually a very nice birthday overall. Armored Wolf was was kind enough to send some sustenance this way. And we partook of that. That's why we were a little bit later. Because there was no way all that yumminess was just going to uh, sit there and get cold. It had to be eaten first. Yes, indeed. All right, now I'm going to also straighten out a couple of lines here. This is our Van Dyke Brown. Because that line needs to, I think, sit this way a bit more. Yeah, that's it. We're just going to straighten out a smidge here. Also, we can, we can start to darken some things here. We didn't use our dark as dark yet. Why? Because look at now we can essentially start to create more shape in here for free it's like free shape uh, and we'll do the same here too and then we're also going to get some more of our mountain or that sh ah that needs to needs to go higher that needs to go higher so is fulton van dyke brown and that gets higher so see, we, we have to be willing to make changes, don't we? I don't care, I'll just use this. 
Oh, it's a nice little blending brush right there. Ah, that's uh, that's better. Much better. Uh, let's see. Uh, tried to get through a game of Talisman, but failed. You know, I might have, I might have played that once, or maybe what? Maybe I watched people play that once. Uh, I I don't know if it kind of degenerated into a game of diplomacy or not, but it sort of sort of seems like it. I don't know. Is Talisman one of those games like diplomacy, where you start out as friends and then twenty years later you still hate each other? I don't know. It seemed like it had the potential for that. <laughs> Once again, we're just uh, taking some of these darks. We incorporate them with what we have. Look at that. Hmm? Look at that. Let's get some more of our darks here. Again, our bits and pieces of our dark tower. Start to fit some of those over here. Probably work in some more lights there too, some more mid tones. And uh, I think that's starting to we're, we're getting there with our lights. We we have not even gone to our lightest light at all. Or I mean, not even close. That's a very intense color, but it's not the lightest. Color intensity and color value, that's a couple of different things. Because what was it? Uh, it was the cadmium scarlet. Remember we used that a couple of times? And you, and you looked at it and it's like, wow, that, that looks lighter. But on the palette it looked darker because it actually was a darker color. But because it was more intense, right? <laughs> so, not, so not quite. Well, that's good. I'm glad Clover... That uh, people didn't end up being uh, deadly enemies after the the game of talisman gone awry, but I've seen it happen certainly with the uh, oh with gosh uh, some friends that we know they played diplomacy once about 25 years ago maybe 30 years ago you even say the word diplomacy and it's like they just played that game last week and they never finished the game. They stopped halfway through, or two-thirds of the way through. They never even finished the darn game, and they still talk about it. Let's see, Grumdy oh, chimes in and says that the Patreon is awesome. Thanks, Grumdy. Boy, uh, and Grumdy, uh, oh, you should post. Uh, well, so Grumdy, why don't you be the, the ambassador of, uh, of the painting there and just uh, show them the Instagram, right, of what you just were doing? Uh, show them the, your uh, canine. Are those canites still? But the Medusa that you were doing? Because, uh, man, those are glorious. I mean, they are absolutely glorious. And I do, but how many years is it now? Eight years worth of videos. It used to be seven. Now it's eight years worth of videos. Uh, which means we're actually starting, who knows? I think by fall, we should easily have uh, 900 hours. Oh, Armored Wolf, are we going to have to have a, a thousand hour celebration or something? Like this is the 1,000th hour of video content for the Patreon page. Uh, although we might be there already. This whole 800 hour thing, we might have actually surpassed that a couple of months ago. So maybe we, maybe I should have a recount first. Ah, that that's good. Uh, thanks, Grumdy. So yeah, it's it's really wild, Grumdy, to think that uh, those Medusa that I painted. Gosh, that was that was the very first Army Painter series. I didn't even know outside of the fact that the first episode was going to be basing and the second episode was going to be cover test figure. I had no idea just how those were all going to eventually plan out or pan out. All right, hitting some more of our light here. Our, look at how that comes forward, right? Comes forward. It's still 
recedes there because there's just going to be more stuff going on here. That's that's how we're going to have this come forward. Harder edges and more more little details here than back here. Speaking of which, going to shoot me a picture, which I again should have done with the other one, but there was uh, there was a lot of activity going on, which is much appreciated because that's what keeps the channel going here is all the the hype train goodness. So much appreciated on the donations and the hype trains the the subs the bits is all that stuff really matters so get we're using the side of the brush here and what are we doing we're trying to get another basically a heel in front of this to set it back even further or farther uh, whatever linguistic uh, thing you prefer Ah, uh, let's see. Ah, Grim is back. Been binge watching the Patreon videos. I'll say to prep the. Ooh, ooh, that's a. Oh, toasted coconut tea, right, uh, Grim? You've. Uh, this is at least the second time you've mentioned the coconut tea. Might be the third time, but there's. Well, I don't know. You've mentioned a lot of really yummy teas. You've been teasing the teas. Boy, Al, those are pretty sensational, aren't they? Oh, actually, Al, if if you have any Instagram on like the stuff that you showed me, uh, yeah, uh, post that too in the uh, in the chat there if you want, so people can see what you've been doing. Actually, I think this turned off. Let me uh, turn this back on if I can. There we go. Uh, here, let me. Uh, Throw a little bit more of my water into this. One second. Here, my microphone wants to fall off my head. All right, I'm just going to get me some more water in here. One second. Hopefully, that works a little bit better. Uh, it's just a cooling unit here. There, that's better. Uh, that. Uh, that feels, I was wondering why it was suddenly getting very warm over here. That's why. So sorry if you could hear that. Ah, oh, the salted caramel. I know you mentioned that. I know you mentioned that before. All right, back to our lighter colors here. And this is another way that we can have this uh, come forward a little bit is by having this one area of light right here and that's going to help this part of our tower stand out a bit and i might just add even some more light layers to our clouds here uh, we can soften all this stuff down And I might even lighten this up a little bit too. Um, I might even also let some of that edge get a little bit harder. Edge control it means a lot. I, I know we say it over and over again. Uh, I apologize if for some folks that gets a little repetitive, but it's such an important thing. And also, too, obviously, you have new people that kind of come in and stuff like that. So we we try to break people in. <laughs> we just we bludgeon them with the with the basic principles over and over again until they are remembered. Uh, what's that one T-shirt? The uh, the the beatings will continue until morale increases or something like that. But we're just a uh, trying to make sure that people kind of have that that basic background info to work with uh, they had a chocolate chai tea earlier oh well yeah anything that has chocolate in it um, i used to have a couple of different chocolate teas and of course i would mix sometimes i would mix two three flavors of tea together oh and that was coffee that's it yeah i was doing that with coffee Gosh, when's the last time I had coffee? It's been years. Oh, actually, we used to have, what the heck are those things called? A Keurig. And I would, actually, I think Kathy did this too. But sometimes I would take either like a, a piece of chocolate or even like a 
like a Hershey's Kiss or a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, and I would put it at the bottom of the cup, and then the hot water would flow down into it, and it would melt and then mixed with the coffee. So, yeah, I used to do that. Uh, I think now our Barador really stands out. I uh, might just a little, little bit more of my light clouds be up here, and then we are going to get a little bit of dark here, too. Oh, we can certainly add more dark there. Can add more dark, too. <laughs> do I go, do we go even crazier and use this right here? <laughs> well, it'll certainly dry faster. Oh, there's a chocolate mint tea. You buy it a pound at a time. Boy, uh, boy, Grim, there's a part of me that would just eat the tea. <laughs> just eat the, eat it right out of the bag and not even wait for it to get brewed or anything like that. Because, you know, that's just how crazy we are here. All right, where did my, oh, that's where it went. It's like, oh, did I already misplace that brush? Well, sort of had. And again, we could still go lighter than this, but we're going to wait. Um, oh, where's my, there it is. Let's throw a little bit of that in here. Uh -huh. Now we're starting to really get at the lightest of our lights. But not too much lighter back here. That That's how we're going to create that difference. And that's just right here on the volcano itself. I don't even think we'll have this light of a color on on our clouds. I think we'll just stick with that. A little bit of this down here again so that it comes up like so. I think now maybe we can try and do some something where we indicate it's the this lighter uh, more of our just a regular orange it's a little bit too light right now ah whisker king how you doing so now that we have some of these uh, lighter colors in here auto's about a little bit of a ah see that now you really start even in black and white because of all the edges right here this is starting to come forward. So even without all of the warmer colors at the base, this is already starting to come forward because of the edges. Same thing right here. So Whisker King, this is the first one that we did tonight. This is what, three hours here. This was uh, our, our, our Minas Morgul. And uh, we, we had made some changes along the way. Like we added the Witch King here with the glowing sword. We added all these Orky guys down here. And uh, we had a little bit more lightning, too. And, of course, some fun stuff over there. Boy, yeah, Grumdy, the... That's, I guess that's when you know you've got your, your values working for you, right? When Even when it's in grayscale. Now, of course, and we've said this several times, that was literally pounded into us at the Academy. I mean, they were pretty... They were ruthless. <laughs> they were absolute... Now, I think you've heard the stories I told you of like our watercolor class and stuff. And there were some folks that, uh, oh, shall we say, they left the room and we weren't sure we were ever going to see them again because they were, uh, well, there were some tears flowing, to say the least. Definitely there were some tears. Uh, but their tears were fantastic because uh, we saw what happened to them and we said, well... <laughs> We better not have that happen to us. Ah, Deuce is back. How you doing there, Deuce? Thank you so much. And, and as I said, thanks to everybody that's really helped make this a really special birthday stream and a just a special day in general. And that's why I, I also especially want to thank our moderator, Armored Wolf, who once again was kind enough to furnish some wonderful tasty sustenance for us here that's helped keep us going here 
He said, oh, I guess, wow, time flies when you're having fun. I didn't realize that it was over five hours already. Wow. I had no idea. I was thinking it was still more like three and a half or four. So that means, once again, if everybody could please uh, check out Armored Wolf on Instagram. Also check out the Armored Wolf Etsy page for all the wonderful dice bags and just really incredible works of art. So here now we're going to try and get some of the uh, mountain shape in there. Yeah, a little bit like so. Uh, and Deuce, thank you very much. The bits is. Thank you very much. So yeah, Deuce, we had to uh, we had to let some folks know they they wanted to know what the age was, and we had to tell them it's like, look, you you don't want to know the the number is too hard to calculate. It's like the human mind cannot comprehend the immensity of time. It's just too much. You you can't expect the human mind to be able to understand that sort of a number. It's just inconceivable. And of course, we also determined that uh, even even Galactic Overlord is somewhat provincial. So we were thinking, uh, actually, Nixel, I do believe, came up with the thing that that uh, we should also rule the multiverse. Yeah, so we should also be ruling the multiverse too. Uh, I think uh, Oils would like to lay claim to some of that for sure. Oh, but wait, there's even more. We're just going to get a little, little tendril of this out this away. Doesn't have to be complete, just a little bit there. Yeah, we can do that. Just like the Witch King's, uh, his sword, right? Doing a little bit of that. Now, while it's been fun to have this, uh, I'm going to do a quick, let me let me just do some here. I'm going to do a quick little film noir. You can see how little value there is. Uh, like, that's not very dark. Let's see what happens when we put a dark there. We're going to get at least three types of contrast in one shot right here. Where's my... Uh, there it is. I think we'll be able to put three different types of contrast together here. Uh, if we do a little bit of indigo, so we're going to get edge contrast, color contrast, and value contrast. Oh, look at this. Wow. That's going to draw your eye, eye to this. So, Anne, remember, where's our little drawing here of our centers of interest? Boom, boom, boom. Those four, where are they at here? Boom, 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 boom. So we're we're sticking to that same uh, sort of compositional guide. Same same sort of guide. And we talked about breaking this into more shapes. Since I was going to be breaking this into more shapes, why not also add more contrast here? Oh, look at that. Yeah, maybe that needs to be faded out a bit, but use this. And we have ourselves a bit of a fade right there. And the other thing that this does, just like our uh, the, the seascape, right? What does it do? It flattens this out. It makes Hello, this deeper. Little hobbit, spark my gun, John. <laughs> And thank you so much, the Kevin Johnston. Hello, little hobbits. Uh, oh. Fly, you fools. Uh, might want to light the beacons, too, while you're at it. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for that follow. That is appreciated. Uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. Posted some quick updated progress pics. And uh, please, if people could check out what Al just posted, that would be sensational. Because Al has also supported the channel for a, for the longest time. Uh, that's why we have Capone Green, I believe it was. I think actually we need to name Perline Black Capone Green because uh, 
That is such an amazing color right there. Uh, so Whisker King, it's uh, it's images, it's miniatures, it's everything. So here on the miniature that we were painting last night, this is your center interest up here. Not down here, not over here, but up here. And how we did that, well, you got the Terra Rosa, so the only really warm colors are up here. You got the object source lighting up here. We kept this kind of muted down here, very much the same kind of color. Not a lot of highlights down here. But we made this the focal point, also the way our arms are pointing, right? So it's kind of making a circle here. The Again, the object source lighting, the warmer colors, everything was driving your eye this way to look at that point up there. And every miniature has one. Every single miniature. Look at the Gandalf here, same thing. You're trying to get everything pointed up to his face right there. So every miniature has that, and certainly every every picture has that every image has that otherwise you're you just kind of drive the viewer nuts because they just don't know what the heck to look at what to focus on so that's a really important thing again whether it's 2d art 3d art it Stop doesn't matter my oh thank you so much kelly ram i appreciate that well here you go you shall not uh pass um, you know what? You guys head on to Mordor. You know, I'll catch you later. Uh, you know what? I'll catch an eagle. I'll catch an eagle and uh, he'll take me there. I'll, I, I promise I'll be at the Black Gate sometime in the Fourth Age. Uh, so yeah, Whisker King, that is a, it's a vital thing. And it doesn't matter if you're working on miniatures or whatever. There's got to be somewhere for your eye to just kind of go, all right, look, I'm looking at this. Uh, even something like a newspaper, there's a reason why there's a big image and a big block of text and then a bunch of smaller stuff around it. Why? Because they want to hit you with that big image and the big text first. Imagine a newspaper that was nothing but a bunch of like <laughs> eight point typeface and no pictures. That's a newspaper with no center interest. So think of that big old honking picture and that big headline. Well, that right there is your center interest. And you need to do something like that on your miniatures, uh, certainly on these, on these paintings. Otherwise, the eye is just gonna be wandering around all delirious, like having no idea what the heck to look at. And that's, uh, that's no good because people don't really like that. People get awful twitchy when their eye has nowhere to focus. I'm going to, you know, I think we're going to separate that just a bit more. And then I'm going to push in this. Ah, that's what I needed to do. All right, that's a little better. This is another edge that I want to reinforce, and then I also which end is which end is which on this thing here? I don't know, but we're also going to extend our wall out a little bit that way, and extend our hill out this way too. And then these guys, just like we did on our hills with our Minas Morgul. And you'll see that same effect that we did here. Same effect over there. Look at that. See how that, the kind of the misty stuff kind of goes in between the crags there? Look, we did the same thing down here. So it builds those layers, right? Now, Whisker King hides minis in shame. Well, Whistriger King, it's it's funny because you know we didn't really consciously think of that with our miniatures when we first started painting miniatures 20 years ago. Yeah, we're, we're painting Blood Bowl miniatures for our friends. We we weren't thinking like, okay, we gotta have, we must have this center of interest, right? It just kind of happened. We weren't really thinking about it. But obviously, when you're doing this kind of stuff, right, you have to 
almost see things the way other people are going to that maybe haven't painted before, haven't uh, thought about those kind of parts of the miniature painting process. And, you know, having been in art school and had the same, the same ideas, the same principles just crushed into my head time after time after time for years because, you know, all of us had very thick skulls, so uh, it took quite the dwarven hammer to get those stuff, uh, get that pounded into our heads. Uh, look at this, you know, I'm even going to, even the reference shows that being somewhat lighter. So the lighter this is, more this comes forward, that is going to get set back even more. But what was the oh the t-shirt that I keep uh, looking I have not been able to get this t-shirt yet well there's all kinds of great ones there's two of them there's the Mordor fun run t-shirt that I would really love to get as we add some more lights in here the other one is the the ride of the Rohirrim ba basically it looks like a Hell's Angels kind of a shirt kind of a design like that but it's obviously it's got your uh, it's all very Rohan themed oh that would be that would be sweet. Okay. So we've broken this up in even more smaller shape. It's like a, it's sort of a sea of lava, right? Just a sea of ash here. Punctuated by some of these craggy peaks. Now here again on the slopes of Mount Doom, the more detail-y things we start doing here, uh, the, you're drawing the eye back there. So we got to be real careful about that. And the only way we can counteract that is by putting some more, more stuff going on here on Barador itself. So we might come back with more darks here, I think. That's probably another thing we'll do. We'll also lighten up a few of these areas. And we can always come back in with our blending brush. So that needs to be changed a little bit. That was too hard of an edge right there. That was like, whoa, wait a minute. Tangent City. Look at that. We, we take away that edge a little bit. Now this recedes to the background. That edge was way too hard right there. It was literally like this was just taped down behind this. It looked like some kind of weird family portrait thing where somebody tapes their face in. Or maybe some kind of Hollywood stalker or something like that who, who tapes his face in right next to the person. Uh, Aaron Banal is back. Aaron, how are you doing? So yes, we have... Uh, We've switched paintings here. Now uh, we've we've gone from Minas Morgul to Barador, because you know we we need their lavas and all that other good stuff, don't we? And this uh, again, when you usually see me utilizing this brush, it is as a blending brush. But here we're uh, we're painting with it, and I'm also going to change this around a little bit. Uh, Van Dyke brought a little bit of our black spinel and maybe even a little indigo. Uh, this surely could be darker. Yes, it can't. Look at that. It can certainly be darker. Look at that. So much darker. And, oh, and this, uh, all these little uh, parapets, towers, all that good stuff. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun, just uh, Give me that, shrimp. Thank you so much for that, hello, little hobbit. Uh, oh, spark my ganja. Thank you so much. Give me that, shrimp. That uh, that sounds tasty. 
Ah, uh, see, yep, I remember. It's interesting because, you know, there's a little bit of Mordor in the background, but here we were using our fluorescent green, right? This was our uh, fluorescent green oil paint that we made by hand. Now, now we're starting to use some of our yellow here and our fluorescent orange. So all those are hand-mixed oil paints. And uh, they're the same ones, again, that we used on our army of the dead same ones that we also used here on our cave troll right there now nah, whisker king i'll never forget those early i don't know if it was i think it was monday irv shapiro did his watercolor demos and pretty much just the entire class of us just were looking like you pretty much could have had a bunch of goats sitting in the room and we would have comprehended what he was doing maybe about as well as a bunch of goats uh, actually we probably would have made less noise than the goats because we were just kind of uh well just had no idea what was going on now of course too like goats, we were only given one color to work with. Seriously, we had one color to work with the entire first what, six months of this of the year. Uh, so we're putting some pointy things in our tower here. That's also starting to bring that forward. Now, oh, boy, Grumdy, I I'm really glad that that uh, that mix worked for you because that was that was not the smallest base in the world either. It's not the smallest base in it. I mean, that's really such a spectacular result. Ah, thanks, Arabal, Aaron Bano. That's uh, and of course we've been comparing it to the the miniature that we did last night, and that uh, that whole center of interest thing, that whole discussion, right, where this is your center of interest. So a lot of this stuff has to be just more muted value wise. Uh, Color-wise, a lot more muted, and of course we have our handy little this right. Our, our four points where we want to have that center interest at, and again, boom, boom, and another one over here. So, and also too, you've got this is weighted more to this side. This is a little, there's a little less going on here, more over here. So again, a little bit of a a counterbalance, right? Now let's see, dude's just grabbed. 10 gram pigments from the Kremer place. Ah, so, so Deuce has Yin Min. All right, so everybody, uh, let's see, we're gonna wear, we're gonna wear some ski masks and we're gonna wear all black leotards and we're gonna head on over to Deuce's place and we're, we're going after that Yin Min blue because uh, Deuce has Yin Min blue. The world knows now. It's fair game. We're we're coming after <laughs> we're coming after Deuce's Yin Min Blue. Here we got look at this. This is our this is literally the brush we use for blending. Now we're painting these tiny little details with it. It's all about the pressure of the brush. Look at how we're holding this darn brush. When we were doing our, our 2D art, this is how we had to hold it. I mean literally like this. Just cradled in the palm of your hand. Ah, so Kramer has the uh, Yin Min. I don't know. I think uh, I think Deuce really has Yin Min Blue. I think he's trying to throw us off the scent. I I think he's got it. I think he has Yin Min Blue sitting over there. He just doesn't want us to know. He's just calling it Yin Fin Shmoo. He doesn't. He didn't want us to know what he's actually got over there. Ah, Loim, uh, now, one of the things that we're starting to realize is, uh, okay, uh, what is it, your Egyptian violet, well, especially Konakonome golden brown, which apparently must be made out of actual gold, the brilliant yellow, pale, fanchion red, those are not the cheapest colors in the world, but if you wait for that, uh, for Dick Blick to have one of their sales, 
you can get all four of those. Now, you're not going to get a giant tube of them, but, man, you don't need a big tube, right? You don't need a bunch of it. I'm starting to realize that that is actually a bargain basement well. I mean, it's 35 bucks. It's not, not cheap, but it sure as heck is a more manageable way to get your hands on things like the Fanchon Red, the Egyptian Vout, and especially the uh, Quinacridone Golden Brown. Because, man, that uh, that stuff right there, that's expensive. Oh, thanks, Whisker King. I appreciate that. Uh, oh, Aloim, I meant to ask you uh, now, basically, so after, in the fourth age, right, all this goes away, Mount Doom doesn't erupt anymore. They did actually turn some of the lands of Mordor back into farmland, didn't they? Or at least some kind of arable land in the fourth age. Uh, I don't know if uh, there had been basically people that were sort of enslaved that were making the food and stuff like that, or at least growing something. Because you had a big old lake, right, in in uh, Mordor. I, f I can't remember what the sea was. Well, it was more like a sea, I think they called it. But it was some kind of a, it was It was fairly big. Look at this. Look at here. Here's our, our mist in front of that. Look, it's going to push Mount Doom even further back here. So I guess that's another way of maybe getting your hands on some of these paints is, is the starter set route. But not just like the Winton starter set or the Gamlin starter set. Uh, let's see, they resettled, especially around Minas Ithil. It took a long time because, uh, well, they that was uh, Faramir, right, and Eowyn. Uh, they, they basically sort of brought... Minas Ithil back and then even inside Mordor itself apparently they were actually they started growing stuff again I mean volcanic soil is rich right I mean that's why Hawaii has like so much wildlife and plants and everything else because volcanic soil is somewhat rich uh, let's see Whisker King asked you visualize this stuff in your head uh, so Basically, so Whisker King, we obviously, we had these two little references right there. But you just know, like we were talking about earlier, it's it's sort of like a chess match. You got to be thinking moves in advance. Like right there, there's no way those two edges can be the same level of hardness. We got to we gotta knock one of these down. Just like this here. I knew this had to be here because otherwise it's just going to be like, like you just tape these things on top of each other. This little bit of a mystique thing right here pushes that back even further even though it's on the same level because uh you know they're on the same level but just from a standpoint of the eyes what's the easiest way to get something to fade to the background it's to have these these uh soft edges right what's the easiest way to get something to come forward hard edges all these hard edges here too And what's interesting of these, uh, I don't really use these uh, miniatures for any kind of detail things, but when it does come to the 2D stuff, I actually get a chance to do that. Uh, big acrylic, yes, I hear you have completed a trip around the sun. My agents have failed. Celebrate this day. It may not. It may be your last. Is that is that the little addendum that big acrylic didn't put on there? So yes, we take that as a a not so veiled threat by big acrylic right there. Uh, so Whisker King, that was going to be the invasion of Japan itself. Obviously, uh, you know, Honshu, I, I, I believe that's where they were headed off to. Uh, let me see. Oh, and your granddad was in North Africa. I know I've uh, had some uncles. Uh, actually, I know one of my uncles, he was, uh, he's photographed, uh, obviously, with the uh, some camels and such, uh, a caravan. He got himself photographed with a caravan. Ah, oh, and Loin was with the combat engine. Or grandma was in, or grandpa was in the combat engineers in the Pacific Theater. Boy, uh, yeah, the think of how many runways, all that kind of stuff had to be built out of nothing in no time. 
I was, uh, and, and obviously, you know, they had modern-ish equipment like bulldozers and such, but they didn't have what we have today, that's for sure. Uh, so Heretic Scott, how are you doing? Uh, well, Heretic Scott, uh, well, I think you've, you've seen the terrain that we've done too, right? Uh, we hope that there's still more things we can do that we don't know about yet. But ironically enough, uh, while I was talking about my brothers and sisters that all play, they don't just play one instrument. They, In some cases, uh, my brother played dozens of instruments. He wrote symphonies in multiple languages. Uh, that that wasn't me. I, I play zero instruments. Youngest of seven, don't play any instruments. But I'm also the only person that does the uh, does the painting. So that's kind of, that was kind of weird. But that's just how it kind of worked out. Yeah, instrument. I love music, but uh, I could never quite get the hang of playing instruments. Oh, and Armored Wolf, uh, that that is the primary inability. Well, uh, Armored Wolf, would you say that I have an infinite talent to roll nothing but ones? Maybe the occasional two. Just to kind of just to kind of break things up once in a while, but pretty much it's just it's just ones. Yeah, that's uh, that's how we roll, as the phrase goes. Ah, Whisker King's grandmother built tanks in a factory. Uh, so Whisker King, uh, now was she working on the? Like the early stuff, like the M3 Lees, or was she working more on the uh, the fire? F well, no, that they didn't make the fireflies here. It was the British that were doing that kind of stuff. But uh, or was she working on things like buffaloes and uh, some of those other type of somewhat armored vehicles? Ah, I've been playing around. Heretic Scott's been doing some enamel washes. Uh, heck, your Heretic Scott, if you got any. Uh, any pictures or whatever from your Instagram of things you've been messing around with the last couple of weeks? If you want to toss those in the chat, that way people can see what you've been doing. Uh, boy, Grumdy, uh, <laughs> I, I hope that uh, I have not leached that particular curse upon you. I apologize if I have. But Armored Wolf is not kidding. I mean... It, it's shocking here because people will say there is it's not humanly possible to roll that badly that consistently and it's also and you know how it is you were just in a tournament too right there's roles where okay that role didn't go well but it's not super consequential but there's game changing roles and, and people know that if there's a game changing role there is a 120% chance that that is going to go not just badly for me, but the worst possible bad for me. Uh, let's see. Though so I guess yeah, that was the uh, that was the question too. Uh, it was it uh, was it in 3.0? And again, I, I'm. I, I apologize if we have kind of leached our uh, hideous luck upon you when it comes to the dice rolls. How was the last 2.0? Ah, but you did get a vote for the favorite army. Uh, now, Grumdy would just say that uh, you know, list-wise, if the rolls had been average... I mean, even just re even below average, like slightly below average. Do you think that even then you still could have managed to survive a little bit? Because that's all I ask for at a tournament is, look, they don't have to be good rolls. They don't even have to be average rolls. Even slightly below average, I could live with that. But they're just, they start at catastrophic and they get worse from there. And I just, I have, and of course, the other person is literally rolling nothing but sixes. 
which uh, it makes life a somewhat difficult. All right, do we need to get some more lights in here? Maybe not, maybe not. I'm gonna start with the lighter colors behind it first to set it out. I might throw a few, and this, this is just a very light gray here. That's all it is. It's mostly Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of our indigo and then some white mixed with that and that creates a bit of a neutral gray now if i throw more asphaltum in there i'm going to get a bit more of a reddish gray not like not so much a pinkish gray but a little bit more of a reddish gray i also look at what's going on over here with the ah boy i keep wanting to do more stuff on on mount doom back there but if i do that not gonna work we have to just uh, ignore or uh, resist the temptation to do all kinds of stuff back there we really have to I think here i need to come in with even not just more darks but even a sharper edge along here to bring this to the foreground and then this too we can't just have that there's there's a whole lot of nothing going on there we're going to come back in here this is our what normally is a blending brush and that's mostly van dyke brown on the brush there and it's very similar at this point to what we were doing right along here it's kind of the same stuff and we were just doing this so if you want to go back the first three hours of the stream was this and basically our second three hours is uh this right here and in fact i'm just gonna maybe get myself a little picture right here just uh just because we've been trying to uh, take picture we forgot to do this on our first one i want to remember to do that on this one here so one second here we go and now we'll continue adding our darks over here uh, i'm gonna throw a oh boy that might have been too much thinner uh just so that we can sharpen up some edges there we go yeah so now we're we're drawing you out to the edge of the image this is to get you this is your road here's your road into mordor little hobbits you go this way you go this way and you go back there there's your road unless you're an eagle oh let me see <laughs> armored wolf uh oh uh, grumdy oh sorry sorry let me let me scroll up here um do so uh, feel like my painter is morphing into an alchemy lab but hey deuce those dry pigments are sensational aren't they See, Grumdy was, oh, you're using the Bone Reapers. Oh, my goodness. Ah, oh, Grumdy. And that, that's going to be a big part of your strategy because it's, it's, it's just, well, we don't, we don't use that phrase. We, we don't say that phrase here, but um, roll a two. And you're like, you, you can at least roll a two. No, right? It just doesn't happen. Uh, let's see. Whisker King, are oh, they working on either the Sherman? Oh, the Canadian version. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, Heretic Scott's great grandfather was an air vice marshal in the RAF. Another relative was a surgeon in the First World War. I oh, got a picture of him in the. Oh, uh, surreal to find out most of the men in the photo died a few days later. Yeah, Heretic uh, Scott. Well, I guess uh, what did they call him? Pals. Pals division or Pals units or something like that, where entire towns all signed up together, and like first day of the psalm, it's like, well, okay, midsummer, midsummer magna, everybody's gone, no more midsummer magna, at least no more guys left, because uh, they they sort of uh, that didn't happen anymore by Second World War, right? Everybody was spread out into different units. Was it Powell's Brigades or something like that they called them? Uh, so Aaron Bino, what we like to do is we like to say no white, any kind of white highlights until you're practically done. 
So that that's uh, once you go to any kind of a highlight that's got white in it, you're kind of done because you can't get any lighter than that, right? There is actually no white on here. Uh, here, let me. Well, we can we can just do this. So as you can see, there is nothing. I mean, there there's a bright yellow, but that yellow is still not white. So there is nothing that is actually as light as this anywhere on here. And it's also the same here. Even the lightest highlights on here still have either some green mixed in them or some kind of indigo. There is no white on here. Usually white is just like the total absence of any kind of color. So you, you like to maybe stop just short of that. But the action is in the mid-tones. The action is definitely in the mid-tones there. Ah, okay, Heretic Scott. Some told me that that's kind of what they did. And this is why we like the film noir. Because this is what lets me know, all right, you take away that built-in contrast of all the oranges and the reds versus all the blues and such. This is where you could say, all right, it, maybe you go a little bit lighter and that would be your value contrast. But let's bring back our color contrast right here. Let's do that. All right, there we go. This is a more important contrast. This edge contrast is more important than making it lighter. Uh, if I get mad at First World War or First World Problems, I try to remember we've got it pretty easy compared to back then. Boy, Heretic Scott, uh, it's pretty crazy to think that even in the Second World War, a lot of folks that were in those vehicles and the ships and the subs and the tanks. There was an awful lot of them that have never that had never used a telephone. They'd never never seen electricity, or you know, certainly not a whole bunch of it. Uh, it it's crazy when you think of uh, the the lack of technology back then, and back then didn't have to be that long ago. At least compared to what we're used to now, right? That's uh, well. Again, uh, both of my parents they were uh, they were born in 1922, and in 1922, I do believe it was still illegal to have a private airline. In 1922, radio was just getting to be a thing. You know, there was no sound in movies. Uh, actually, th there's a, a really great series that I recommend everybody watch. It's a historical, so just a documentary series. It's called The Impossible Peace. It obviously starts in 1919 and takes you all the way up to 1939. It takes you through the Spanish Civil War. It takes you through the Weimar Republic, through everything. Well, it doesn't quite take you through everything. It doesn't talk about the you know, miracle on the Vistula and the Russian Civil War so much. But when you see all that, you realize just how primitive things were, but how technology changed everything so quickly. It just literally, you, you transformed society overnight. You redrew a bunch of borders. You threw all this technology out there. Now, here's another case. Look at this. We got hard edge versus hard edge. We got to do something. We're just going to do that. See that? Look at it. Separates. It's very simple. We just took some of this, just dry brushed it on there. That's it. So, yeah, we, we had to trade... Uh, there was a guy with a fiddle that came up and he said, so do you want to get in a fiddle playing contest? He's like, dude, man, that that's for my other siblings. Uh, what about paint? And that's when he pulled out the dice and a paintbrush. And he said, which do you want? Hello, little hobbit. Spark my gun. He says, is it going to be dice or a paintbrush? And I, apparently we chose the paintbrush instead of the dice. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Boridson, for that follow. I appreciate the hello, little hobbits. I, oh, spark my ganja. Light those stupid beacons already, will you? It's like, dude, man, he's lit. I know, man, right? Uh, Gandalf the Fool. 
too much of the halfling leaf. He's like, uh, dude, so have you seen my ring? He's like, uh, ring? What What ring? What are you talking about? I don't know. Is that like a telephone? I got a phone. Uh, it's a Palantir. Way better cell phone service. Uh, let's see. Grandfather worked at Vodafone and did a lot of work with airwave radios when they first started to enter the police force. Wow. Vodafone. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's see. Just before pure white coal, uh, take that teachers who would walk by and three stripes of pure white. Oh, yikes. Um, actually, well, Aaron Bennett here, I think we showed you these earlier. I don't know if you saw these or not, but here's a couple of pastels. Now, I have a bunch more on the blog, but let's get down to some pastels right here. Uh, so here's these are some watercolors. Again, uh, there's no white on there. There is nothing that's white. But here's some pastels and no white. Nothing on there is white. There's a, there's a very light yellow, like a yellow white. And even on the snow, that's still not straight up white. There, even on that pastel, there is no white there. So, yeah, I mean, if you were if you were caught dipping into the white uh, anything, I was wondering uh, how far are we off? We're so we're 15 away from 5k. That was uh, I was just about to ask. Actually, I remember I was just kind of about to look for myself to see. I knew we weren't really really close. Uh, but I thought we were—I thought we were getting closer. We are edging closer. So who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe during the Monday stream, we'll be able to uh, sneak past that 5K mark. Oh, thanks, Armenia. Armenia, I, I appreciate that. Uh, I just—I wish I still could work with the pastels. Uh, right now, it's more just time. I just wouldn't have time to work with them. But back in the day, we had to kind of put the pastels aside since uh, they were just too hard to make into prints. I was able to scan a few of them, but the process of scanning the uh, the pastels almost destroyed them. It almost destroyed the scanner, too. And at the time, scanners cost about 900 hours. So that was a bit of a risky, uh, a risky prospect. Now here I need to throw a little bit more rockiness, I think, into some of this, and more. I'll go, I'll go with a little bit lighter here. So again, this is nothing more. If you're going uh, what one to ten on a value scale, we might be at two. That's about how bright this is. It is definitely not white by any stretch of the imagination. So we have uh, several several blog posts on the 2D art because that's what we used to do. That's that's how we used to make a living was doing the 2D art. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the whole situation of 9/11 it just uh, it kind of put an end to that particular business and it launched us into painting miniatures. And it's uh, as much as we enjoy the the 2D art, the the painting of miniatures. It, it's it's really satisfying, and we can really reach a very nice audience too. This in here now, I'm looking at my reference. That's even lighter, so maybe we will play around with some even lighter colors back there in the far far background oh like here maybe like so and here oh let's do a little more over here uh, again we're trying to focus on this is because we got a lot going on over here right a lot going on. We're also going to darken some of our sky down because we can do that. Like up here, get a few more darks. We'll build those in too. Uh, and uh, Aaron Benny, the other thing we like to do is it's sort of like a game of Monopoly. You, you have to build evenly 
and and this is always the same for miniatures it doesn't matter whether it's 2d art or miniatures we we build evenly you build one house and one pro another house and another you're not going like one house here hotel on the other no it's it's a uh, far more evenly constructed than that All right, I'm going to turn this just so you can see it. And we're looking at up here especially because if we do a dark dark here, then that red's going to recede even more. It's very rare that something that's, well, fluorescent red essentially recedes to the background. But we can do that. We can make that happen here. And again, this is the same. Look at the, how little paint there is on that brush. The reason why it's sticking here is because we have a whole bunch of paint. See the reason it doesn't really stick there? There's no paint there already. We got we got probably four or five layers of paint there that are already in existence. We're we're basically <clears throat> we're basically activating those by just dry brushing this stuff on. Now we're gonna throw out a little bit more of our indigo right here. And we're gonna let that mix in with our Van Dyke brown and other such things. That's gonna make a nice rich dark color instead of just black and look how we're using the side of the brush here wasn't all that long ago that we were using this brush sort of like a regular you know a nice sharp tip brush now we're using the side of it scumbling in these colors and i i don't think oh this is on youtube now I don't have the the base yet, but so we did this session. See the the spacecape there? That was all done in oils. Well, this whole thing was done in oils, but that spacecape, the clouds were done exactly the way we're doing them now. Obviously a little bit smaller, but you can see how some of there's some soft edges there. There's some hard edges there. So to me, a spacecape and apparently a volcanic landscape are uh, identical. Who who'd have thought? Who'd have thunk it? Again, some dark over here. And then we just sort of swirl that brush, which uh, essentially starts to mix some things. I'm going to let that be a little bit darker too. Again, see this, this swirling brush stroke that we're using? It's a it's not just a dry brush, it's the type of brush stroke. It's, it's literally mixing itself at the same time. We're doing the same over here. We've, we've got the paint in place. Now we're just letting it mix with all those other layers that are, well, guess what, already in place. And now we'll darken this down some more too. And the whole thing with our eye, guess what? It's going to stand out that much more because we've darkened this down. Uh, boy, Aaron Bennett, I really did enjoy... Uh, pastels it was it was uh i liked watercolors but watercolors was sort of the i don't know it was the business medium right that was the most common thing that i made you know the prints that i was going to be selling it was mostly watercolors the, the pastels were just it was a really fun medium because i mixed them with my fingers i was literally just painting with my hand there was no brush there was just my hands and the paper and that's probably why i liked it so much now you know why we just paint so uh, rigorously and messy because uh, our favorite type of painting had no brushes. We were finger painting. Ah, uh, look what's happening here. We talked about a few clouds in here, remember? We were just, we were kind of waiting to get to this stage. Uh, oh, look, there's wet paint there. Ah, uh, Theo, we're just kind of scumbling those clouds in. Happy little clouds. Happy little dark clouds of doom. They don't know why everybody calls them dark clouds. They're just happy little dark clouds. They're not sure why everybody doesn't like them. Just because they foretell doom and destruction. It's not their fault, is it? They're just clouds. Now I... Uh, I suppose in some ways now that we're using the 
the pigment powders uh, maybe in a way we're sort of paying uh, homage to our uh, pastels again obviously we're mixing them with the uh, linseed oil but uh, maybe all right let's uh, continue to darken some of this here again that the darker this gets the lighter this gets. We can lighten this by darkening what's around it. That's why we also don't need to go bam to the white, right? Uh, but we say it all the time with the oils, when in doubt, go darker. When in doubt, make it darker. Because if you make it darker, you're just gonna, uh, if you go to that, that super bright highlight straight away, it sounds like it's a good idea. It seems like it's a good idea. But instead of that being lighter, making everything else around it darker to give the fool the eye. To, we're, we're delusionists. Uh, I used to say we're illusionists. Now I just say we're delusionists. Because we give the folks delusions that they're seeing what we want them to see. See so how we're just kind of going after the edges of some of these here clouds. Look at this. Ah, uh, pushes it back even further, right? It's just like this little misty thing. Push that back, pushing it back further now with more clouds. And if you go back and look at the earliest version of this, we we did our pre-glaze. I mean, there was literally nothing different on this than if we were painting a miniature, except the fact that this is in three dimensions or two dimensions instead of three we have to simulate depth because uh yep no the and also too the you can see there's no thick oil paints on there right because it's the other sort of uh well speaking of delusions people get that idea that well if it's a 2d painting you are piling that stuff on there nah i didn't pile paint down there when i painted in two dimensions i couldn't do that if I did that, it was going to look really wonky when I scanned it. And a wonky scan meant a wonky print, and a wonky print meant not being able to sell anything. So, And not being able to sell anything meant not making mortgage payments. Ah, look at this. So we've got our misty cloud carrying its way through here. Yeah. The dark evil tower looks even more evil. Or maybe it just looks more homey. Maybe some folks, they just look at that and they say, you know what? As long as it's got Wi-Fi, I'm good with that. Well, that and maybe, uh, I don't know, some people might want Apple TV or Hello, something. I don't know. little hobbits. Spark my gun. Well, thank you, Rexy the Senpai. And uh, sorry if we missed you, Rexy. And then AK47 boy. Thank you very much. Oh, no. Uh, I'm out. Hello, uh, little hobbits. Spark my gun, just. Ah, uh, no, I did not miss. I did not miss. They were just, they were simultaneous. So thank you very much for that follow. That is appreciated. Oh, and thanks, Rexy. Thanks so much for the kind words. So I don't know if you saw our earlier painting here. So uh, six, well, basically six hours, really, because we did a lot of other little side lessons. So in six hours, we did our Minas Morgul here. And also now doing our Baradour or Mordor. <laughs> I, I like to just uh, love me some Baradour. Uh, that's why we're doing Blackguard of Baradour Orcs. It's also why we have the uh, Great Beast of Golgoroth that we sculpted a few months ago. That was really fun. I'm going to just squeeze in a couple more of our clouds here. And, and like I said, we're just using the side of the brush. I want to have enough of these go all the way to the edge of the board. That's that's really important. And also, too, you, you see how the clouds are kind of pointing? Look at that. They're all sort of pointing towards the tower here. It's center of interest. We're pushing the eye. We're, we're dragging them in this way. We're literally dragging them through the black gate, dragging them in this way. And then they're they're going to try and escape this way, but, uh, you know, there's probably some Nazgul up there waiting for them. 
I don't think they're getting out that way. Eagles or no Eagles. Oh, what was the latest uh, lore video? Oh, yeah, it was, uh, wasn't really a lore video. It was more of their kind of what if or one of these things where they say so. People say it all the time. Why didn't they use the Eagles, do this, that, and the other? And because uh, not having, again, read the things, I was like, well, okay, what, what, what's going on? First of all, uh, I guess Tolkien himself said that he didn't want to overuse them. But from a practical standpoint, a bunch of giant birds flying around is going to attract attention. So there was secrecy was somewhat important. So that's one thing. Uh, second of all, all it takes and, you know, just ask Smaug. It's just one lucky dude with a lucky arrow shot. And, you know, the ring drops out of the eagle's talons or whatever. And, you know, Sauron has his ring back. So that was that was the other reason is that the uh, eagles are not exactly heavily armored and it just takes one lucky arrow shot. You know, the, they're they're not just going to be, you know, diving onto the deck of an aircraft carrier. They're they're going to want to come back from that trip. Ah, Grotz, how are you doing? So, so well, these guys made the giant battering ram. I guess uh, it <laughs> a, a rail gun. So, Grotz, would you have to make a rail gun to uh, to shoot the uh, the ring into Mount Doom? Well, actually, we came up with the solution here. Uh, guess who's the ring bearer? That's Alex, because Boromir gave him the ring, and and he said, "Keep it safe, keep it secret." And Alex said, like, dude, I don't have pockets, man. And Bormer says, look, just take the stupid ring. So Alex kind of hit it uh, as best as he could. And unfortunately, Alex's diet is not the greatest in Moria. So he's like, man, I don't think Sauron's going to want that ring. I'm just telling you right now, it's going to be ugly. So yeah, Alex still has the ring. And of course, Boromir's like, all right, fine, fine, look. You're going to get after me because I gave the ring to a troll. What was I supposed to do? The guy in the pointy hat was looking at me. Ah, uh, let's see. No, thanks, Amish Stig. No, I, I, I appreciate that. All of the, all of the birthday greetings. Uh, sometimes the ones that come afterwards are just as nice because it's sort of, uh, it extends the day a little bit, right? It adds uh, it adds a few extra hours onto the special day, which is uh, I ain't going to complain about that. It's sort of like uh, Christmas, right? When either you uh, maybe you got relatives or whatever or friends or something, and you can't get together right away, but you get together later, maybe a week or two later, or something like that, and it's it's almost like more fun because. Christmas itself or holidays themselves can be a little bit on the stressful side, all the planning and stuff. But when you can almost kind of do a little post-holiday get-together, you're you're not as stressed out anymore. And you almost enjoy the post-holiday get-togethers a little bit more. And it, it's just kind of like extending the season a little bit further. Nah, like Armistick says, the birthday's not over till the stream is over. But then, I don't know, maybe the party in just begins because, well, <laughs> the chocolate-covered raisins, uh, that's, a, that's my kind of partying right there, but uh, uh, other folks won't be quite so happy. Uh, you, you might want, you might receive a few air quality alerts over the next week or two, depending on how long it takes me to consume those. And, and you're not safe. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter where you live, you're not safe. But <laughs> uh, like, like I say, you get an air quality warning, you know why you're getting that. Uh, so Heretic Scott has posted some new pics. Now, oh, yeah, Heretic Scott, you'll have to uh, 
You'll have to shoot me some of those pics over on Instagram there so we can see those. Here's another case where I'm going to just get a little bit of a misty something here. Again, separate this. That's all I need to do. A little separation over there. Uh, and I'm tempted to do a harder edge on this. However, that too hard of an edge there means that this all of a sudden now we're taking away some of the hard edges we got over here on our uh, on our tower. So that's we gotta pay close attention to what's going on here. Also, to a little bit of thinner into this. See, look at the look at the difference in the edge on that, and the same here. And as you can see, we're also we're not just outlining it. Right, we, we put a little bit of edge right there. That's it. And and some along here. So we're not filling this whole thing in. We're just bringing in the lines like that. We need to do the same over here too. This is uh, getting a little bit flat, especially for something that's in the foreground. Now we don't mind that it's maybe getting a shadow cast to it from all the light coming this way. Don't want it to be one big old block though. So these uh, right here, these midtones, this is so important. Uh, I know a lot of folks, they, the highlights tend to be the big focus, right? The highlights and shadows, boy, oh boy, poor old middle tone does all the work, does most of the heavy lifting, gets none of the glory, gets absolutely no glory. It's all going to the highlights and the shadows. That one of the teachers that we had at the academy, we just called him Master of Midtones. Yeah, we were talking about that that value scale, one to ten, right? If say, oh gosh, four through seven is your middle tones, he literally just painted four through seven, and he could do more stuff with a little bit of color contrast, a little bit of saturation contrast than some people could if they had white and black. It was it was amazing how subtle everything was. But he still managed to get that contrast in there. Despite the fact of essentially just doing middle tones and nothing else. All right, so that is, uh, we're pushing that part of the hill back by darkening out, and the this part of your tower and this part of the construction comes forward a little bit. And they, ah, dark down again. Thank you so much. for the bits is there. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, dark down again. We have been having some fun taking away one dimension, right? So instead of 3D, we're going 2D today. So first three hours on this and roughly first three hours on that and roughly the second three hours over here. Uh, and I, I hope that, uh, like we've said a couple of times, uh, people see this and they, they realize just how similar you know, the miniature painting and the 2D art really are to each other. That there's not that huge gap between them that we do pre-glaze, we do scumbling, we we use lights and darks the same exact way. We use our color transitions the same way. Saturation changes, all that good stuff. Directional brush strokes, center of interest, you name it. Uh, so Whisker King, in many ways, it's kind of like what we're doing here. So what we're, I don't want to get too much on that board there, but... Uh, See, I've got, I'm basically taking the brush on the side here. It's kind of like a circular brush stroke. Instead of just that, you can see it, it sort of blends itself, right? And that's what we've been doing for our clouds right here. So you can, you can see, yeah, see that right there? That's uh, it's our fresh paint that we just applied there. But it's, it's again, a circular type of a brush stroke. Whereas here, you know, we're doing more of a 
something a little more linear like that. But here was more stippling and scumbling, right? Uh, Dirk Danigan, uh, uh, that's the... Uh, I hope they're fun to watch later. What I'm hoping to do is take both of these and then and make uh, YouTube videos out of them. Uh, we'll probably take away some of these, like so they're more like two and a half hours long. Obviously, the first one we had uh, we had quite the hype train and other things going on, so we'll probably uh, and some raids too. So we'll be able to shorten down the first one, and I think it should make a nice little video for people. And of course, it's just I really enjoy the heck out of. Uh, I never get to paint 2D anymore, and this is so fun for me. So I, I, I really appreciate. Hello, Spark my ganja. Uh, thank you so much, Tormund's beard. I appreciate that. Hello, little hobbits. I. Uh, uh oh, fly you fools! <laughs> Gandalf is getting out of town right there, baby. He sees that going on. He's like. Uh, yeah. I, I think, uh, I think Aluvatar gave me the shopping list. I don't know. He wanted something from the hardware store. I gotta go do that. I'll, I'll, I'll join you guys later. Yeah. Uh, if you see me on a boat, that's not me heading west. I'm just, uh, I'm just making sure that they've got their rum ration. Ah, Bithron, how the heck are you doing? And thanks so much for the birthday greetings. So, Bithron, I hope that today wasn't too crazy for you. Uh, what boy, uh, it was just a couple of days ago. I wasn't sure if I was going to still be able to do the uh, our landscapes in Middle Earth thing. But, boy, I am so glad that it worked out the way it did. Because this is just so much fun. And I think it should make some really good lessons for folks uh, as far as how it pertains to miniature painting, too. Now, <laughs> Bithron's got the sore feet. So, Bithron, uh, I mean, how, how did you end up with the sore, with the sore feet? Hopefully, it's not some kind of like an allergic reaction thing or a or a hiking injury, or a bike injury of some kind. Now here is the, the same thing. I'm looking to separate a mountain from over here. Whoa, I was so tempted to throw some lighter. No, not going to go any lighter on our little fog over the top of that. We're going to want to leave that be. I might come back in here. I'm tempted to bring a little bit more of our darker clouds in there. Now, this is another thing that you can do. All seriousness, put your painting in a mirror or hold it upside down. There's a, especially if it's like a portrait or something, you would be amazed at what happens when you turn it in a different direction or even like this. So, you know, is it still kind of, is there still a composition here? You know, can you still see some interesting elements going on? Ah, uh, Bithron, so it's like you've been walking on this for six hours. <laughs> Have you been walking on the volcanic ash of the plains of Golgoroth? That's what it was called, right? The plains of Golgoroth or the wastes of Golgoroth or something like that. Uh, but these uh, these old continents that we've been using for, gosh, almost 20 years now. Uh, and there it is, a bayonet and ricochet miniatures. And... Uh, those uh, take a look at those lancers, especially because uh, you talk about doing some really nifty freehand. Those lancers would be really good for that. Uh, let's see. Oh, thanks, now thanks again, Nick, Nick Nico, for uh, for sign up uh, as always. But those those mixing ones, they're really uh, you just never know what's going to happen, right? And actually, when, when I'm doing those mixing videos, what usually happens is that, uh, like, the first one takes a really long time. And then by the time we get to the last one, we're like, oh, okay. Now it takes way less time because we've kind of figured things out a little bit. 
Oh, no problem, Whisker King. Uh, we just, uh, there, there's uh, so many fun things going on in the miniatures industry. Uh, there's so many you know, creative folks doing so many great things. It's really great to be able to support uh, support other artists in the industry because that's that's certainly what happened to us. If it wasn't for people supporting us, oh my goodness, the journey the journey hasn't been easy, and that's with so many folks supporting us and standing with us along the way. So we de we definitely want to try and spread that around as much as we can. Do I? Uh, I have my lightest code. Yeah, no more there. No more there. But uh, this was really fun to get this little extra bit here. Just like uh, just like Miller was saying, it brings that forward. It just the eye sees that all those little sharp edges. Also, uh, some of the brighter lights right next to some really intense darks. So a couple of different types of contrast working right there. I do think it's uh, time for a little bit of film noir, though. We haven't had one of these in a while. Zoom. Ah, see, even in black and white, look at that. So like uh, like Miller was saying, yeah, there, there's just a, almost like a fog bank right here. We cut into the fog bank and bang, look at that. And even in black and white, that stands out now. But then when we bring back our color here, Bam. All of those, I mean, the highlights stood out before, but woof, now they really stand out. And the same goes, obviously, for our Armina's Morgul. We we had light and dark contrast, but man, you start to pile in. Oh, here, you know what? Let's, uh, let's have some fun with our fluorescent green here. It's just to make a different sort of gray. No one's going to look at any of that and say, Wow, look at that fluorescent green. They'll just say, all right, that's kind of a neat grayish color. Now, we intentionally avoid symbolism to allow folks to be creative. Also, mostly multi-part fix. We can mix and match parts. Uh, Whisker King, as you know, that is music to my ears, right? How many times did you hear me say on the the, the Basilean ship and the Empire of Dust ships, Man, you know, I understand why they put that stuff on the sails, but boy, I wish it wasn't there. Because if that wasn't there, guess what I could do? Uh, I could do all kinds of fun stuff. Lots of free handy things. Now, oh, Miller, as soon as you... Actually, at first, I was just about to do something here, and I thought you were talking about this side. And then I looked again at your message, and it said, you know, lower left. So I looked over here and went, well, yeah, we, what we're doing here, we should put some of that over here. So uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, I see that, that same bright green down here, which won't register as a bright green, but it's a subtle little thing, right? Oh, Whisker King, I really enjoy things that you can just, well, here too, even the... Uh, so this, uh, what is it called? Fire Forged. Because there was no, these were originally Templar, Templar Knights. But because there was no stuff sculpted in there, I could make a full conversion out of this and just paint whatever designs I wanted to or not. And, and of course, you know, the more, the more open the space is, I mean, these are just some very simple free hands right here but because there was no pattern on there i could just do whatever the heck i wanted to there's just something really fun about that and what was uh well even to uh i think what do we have another one here where there's a lot of free hand involved let's see if we can find one here uh well, wait nope not that one Oh, let's just even go with this. Oh, here's one. Yeah. So there is no texture or any design sculpted in on the cloak right there. So this is one of our army painting series. And I was able to have a blast. Just whatever freehand I wanted to put on there. 
and uh, even the, the Sisters of Battle, right, we could put whatever we wanted onto that because, again, no, no prefabbed freehand. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, Miller was a bit art club in high school, so I'm not completely new to painting. Boy, Miller, guess what? Guess what? Me too. I, uh, in high school, I think starting my sophomore year, all the way through senior year, we uh, we had an oil paint club. Yeah, we were doing oil painting. That uh, that goes back a long ways. And, and of course, yeah, I just I wish I knew then what I know now. But uh, there's only one way, right? You gotta, you have to learn it, observe others, see what you can find out, and. Then it's then it's just you painting and painting and painting, over and over again. Uh, sometimes with more success than other times. Ah, uh, but it just works that way, right? And I'm really starting to enjoy this uh, this little bit of green. That I can even see it on camera. I can even see that showing up. And what it's it's doing is it's acting just the same way as our ghostly green did with our Mordor background here on our Minas, our, sorry, our Minas Morgul, yes. Uh -huh, you'll have to paint a giant mural in the school gym. Uh, I don't know if there's anything of mine left there. Uh, I No, I don't... Uh, I don't think so. I mean, there might be. I don't know. <laughs> it's been too long for me to remember. Heck, the Academy is still... A lot of that is pretty darn foggy. Although I have to say, uh, I think there was uh, five former uh, classmates that I actually got some birthday greetings from today. Which, which was really nifty. I think, uh, well, at this point, really, of those five people, two of them are still doing art as they're living. Ah, so, Miller, that must have been really, it must have been a challenge. Must have been a heck of a challenge. And, and hopefully that just stays there forever. And, and nobody, uh, no cracks in the plaster show up. Or you might have had to paint it on top of cinder blocks, too. That's uh if it's painted in a school, it might have just been painted over cinder blocks. So again, a little bit more of this green out here on our Plains of Golgoroth. We'll just call it the Plains of Golgoroth. The other thing I'm kind of doing is uh, uniting some of these smaller little clumps too. Uh, the, some of those got a little bit isolated and they started to look a, almost like the just a bunch of regular, regularly spaced dots. And I was like, no, we don't want a bunch of dots. I was essentially trying to make large boulders and stuff there that uh, didn't quite translate too well. Uh, let's see, my teacher actually sent our art to a local college for competitions. Ah, uh -huh, and, and Miller won grand champion with a painting I thought looked like garbage. Ah, uh, well, congratulations. I know for us, uh, our teachers, they were generous enough to, this was a night after school, they drove us to the American Academy of Arts so we could see what it was like. That was, uh, that was very crazy. You know, you had a whole bunch of high school kids in the school van heading downtown and I just had really never been downtown except once or twice. Maybe the just one of the museums here and there. It was, I never expected to be going downtown every day for the next nine years. Now oh, they since repainted it. Now oh, that, that too bad they repainted it, but hopefully you've got, uh, 
you have yourself some uh, some pictures of it to remember it by. All right, I'm gonna maybe no. Well, what the heck? I'm gonna take some of my orange here, and maybe on this side of Mount Doom, maybe to, to almost. Uh, I don't want to say connect the dots there, but uh, just a little bit. Bring it towards Baradour. Tempted also to add just a little bit of more of our darker lava color this way. So glad that these, my homemade fluorescents are opaque because it covers over that nice and easy, just even as a dry brush. Now it's, oh, it's in the yearbook. Ah, it definitely would have to be in the yearbook for sure. All right, that's uh, again more of our orange dry brushed in there. Uh, it's only what took a trip to Denver to see a bunch of random artists. Yeah, the the academy, like as it was, uh, it's very well. It's different now than it was uh, in that day and age, but it was very much a boot camp. Uh, I do. What was it? The uh, the twenty one people that were in that fundamentals class to start that year, even with three replacements, we only finished the year with nine. So yeah, six out of the original twenty one survived to the end of that first year, and it was kind of designed to do that. Uh, it was it was basically to kind of. If you can handle this, then you survive. But if you can't handle just this uh, this class, there's no way you're going to make it in the uh, commercial art world. And it was sort of a kind of intentionally designed to weed out folks that maybe weren't going to be able to uh, kind of handle the the ups and downs and trials and tribulations of the commercial art world. Uh, you can remember every single art piece. Uh, wow, Whisker King. There's only a very few that I can remember. Obviously, there's those couple that I still have. And then there's, well, there's the ones that my family has. We were talking about that earlier too, right? I think it's a little bit easier for me to remember the ones that I painted when I was doing the 2D art you know, for a living. Uh, you know, I'm glad I carried this over. Oh, so glad I carried it over this way. Yeah, that's a, that's a major plus right there. Also, this gonna tone that down with some orange there. Yeah, so really glad I extended this out here. Uh, it was kind of like, why is this suddenly, why is the light ending over here? It needed to be stretched out this way. Huge help. Uh, it actually brings the eye up this way much better. Ah, uh, Whisker King has the, uh, I don't know, would that still be called a photographic memory? Because, I mean, you remember the image, right? I mean, that could be photographic. Uh, uh, for me, uh, well, as we've talked about here, the lack of sleep the extreme lack of sleep for such a prolonged period. Uh, it, it's sort of a, it's a little bit rough on your memory, to say the least. Most of the time, I'm just like, what's my name again? I used to have a name. What did they call me? What did they call me? Gandalf the Grey. Yes, that's what they used to call me. I'm Gandalf the White. No, you're not. You're Gandalf the Fool. Ah, you didn't think it was going to break out in that, did you? Surprise. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Yeah, you didn't think we were going to pull that out eight and a half hours into a stream, did you? 
That's what you call theater right there. They didn't teach that at the academy? No siree. Probably because there's several laws against that. Uh, it is time for Grimm to hit the hay. Well, Grimm, as we like to say here, we hope you lose that pillow fight. Sadly, I have been I have been victorious in like every pillow fight over the last seven or eight weeks. Now, I think last night there was a little bit more sleep. Uh, it's just there was also an early wake up call today, so that sort of a cut down on the potential of sleepage there. But I hope that you're all rested up. Ah, man, oh man. So just like. Uh, just like Miller suggested, the little thing down here that kind of, and this over here, that got me thinking about this. And man, without having to put a whole bunch of detail in there, it sure solidifies this. This whole thing looks more solid over here right now. It's really interesting what does the smallest thing can make, and it can make a huge compositional difference. Because we're going to do this again. Ah, yes. We talked about all of these, almost like these bowl shapes, right? So it actually kind of looks, it's like a ceiling. Oh, they look like stalagmites or stalactites, right? That's the ones that go down. <laughs> that carried over here, huge deal. That that's, uh, that's very important there. Uh, so Bithron, we're not going to put any small tents, mostly because everything here is such a small scale. I thought about it. But we're just going to go tent free here. We're just going to go with the the desolationness, uh, because this one here is lots of lots of little orky friends, right? We got lots of little orky friends there. But Bithron, there was uh, some other views that were closer, and definitely there was some encampments and stuff. And in fact, I almost thought that this here was supposed to be encampments, but I'm just going all rocky on this one. We're we're going all to. Uh, New Line Cinema. This is the New Line Cinema where nobody's walking around out here. Just like Minas Tirith, right? No actual Pelennor fields, no Ramus Icor, just a big open nothing. We're going New Line Cinema with this view right here. Uh, oh, Bithron, I think you've seen, uh, speaking of orc camps and Ramus Icor, I think you saw uh, Lockheed's or Zorpa Zorps, well, same thing his Ramus Icor thing that he made and uh, the orc encampment that he did with all the lighting and stuff. But yeah, Bithron, we'll have to do one where you're like closer to Barador and you, and it kind of has the encampments in the foreground and Barador is even further kind of towards the back of it. Maybe like around the Black Gate or something. Uh, well, that would certainly be some fun terrain, too, wouldn't it? Oh, you know, Bithron, I keep forgetting that I have... Uh, it's from Mantic. That that really soft, almost like bones material, plastic terrain that they've got. Like encampments and stuff. i got to find those. And i got to get those painted now. Uh, remember, Bithron, that was the one where he did the... Uh, the lighting effect, and they even had a smoke machine for it. I swear he brought it to the Arda tournament. Arda Unleashed, that's it. Yes, he brought it to that tournament. Well, I'm pretty sure that's what it was for. All right, so I am about a little bit up there, but now we're going to kind of come back the other way with this here. And hopefully we soften up that edge just a smidge. Yeah. That same scumbling brush stroke right there. Doing it again. Yeah. 